Good morning, guys. Welcome to another episode of Xa Talk Show. Today is two thousand twenty, January twelfth, Sunday, three o'clock p.m. San Francisco time. And today we, the scheduled topic is supposed to be random, but so random. So if you guys do not have any comments or questions or a topic, if you have a topic, post it. Otherwise, I'm going to start to do random, and that means I'm going to start to work on Emacs. I'm going to do live coding of Emacs Lisp with explanation. So, uh, and uh, the thing is in the des description, YouTube description, you can see what we are, uh, what, what. I just said, and okay, so I'm going to just start to do um, uh, Emacs stuff. So the first thing I want to do is let me show you my art block. Okay, so that is actually today's um, today's image on my YouTube live stream. You can see this image, fantastic image. Good morning, Kathy. Uh, so, any topics, Kathy? Otherwise, I'm just going to do Emac Lisp live coding. So I'm going to begin. So I have this blog, blog, Xa art blog. So you can see it's basically all art-related stuff, visual arts, animations, and stuff. Uh, and uh, some of them are beautiful, beautiful to my eyes. And uh, we have and lots of girls because girls are they are the beauty of humanity, and uh, and uh, so you can see this this art blog page is getting long. So let me show you how many pages: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Very long. Ten is like forty forty screens. So we have Russian girls. What are what are these? Russian steward dresses. Then we have Europa and the bull. We talked about several times. Then we have the Byte magazine of Lisp code. Some forty years ago, nineteen seventy nine, and this is a fantastic article, by the way, and uh, this is a. Uh, I mean, my essay is a fantastic essay, and I talk about from Lisp from this Byte magazine cover. Byte magazine is a old classic uh, magazine for programmers, for amateur programmers mostly and professional. In the in the in the era of nineteen eighties and nineteen mostly nineteen eighties and nineteen nineties. And uh, this, by the way, this photo is taken by this guy. This Kazmi, uh, let me let me see what's how how do you pronounce his name? Kazimir Majorink. Okay, he is in. I think he's either Russian or East European, somewhere there. I I forgot exactly. He's a friend, and he is a common Lisp. He's a Lisp expert, so he studied Lisp and uh, and common Lisp and other Lisps. And in fact, he is also a Lisp historian. He has actually written a book in in what language I forgot. What was it? Uh, Russian or some U Ukrainian or, or I I I don't remember the name. Okay, but you can go to his blog. Okay, so he's got a blog. He has, so he has written a book on the history of Lisp. So you see this. This we were we were chatting. You know, he he doesn't. His last blog is two thousand thirteen, I guess. So this guy, this expert, and uh, you know, you his account of Lisp history is contrary to the common Lisp fuckheads you hear. You know, around the web. You know, like like I mentioned many times before. If you have watched my video or watched. You read my blogs. You know this. Typically, you hang around the Hacker News, Reddit. You know, they, all the Lisp communities, the Emacs communities. They 
what you hear every day about history, about things, is all fake news. Fake news. You know, they are pushed by these fanatics. You know, people who really, you know, they really love Lisp. Common Lisp. They think it's the greatest thing. They think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Bread. They think the Lisp Marco. You know, they. You know, people are like that. You know, you have the Emacs group, you have the Common Lisp group, then you also do have Python group, Perl group, Golang, you know, Rust group, Haskell group. You know, they all, you know, they are people phonetics, code. You know, this is uh, many of these hack, hacker type of languages have this code. And among this code, if you are not careful, if you are not well, if you are not a learned man, you 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 learn all everything's you know not just this particular language you know. So if you are not careful, you will hear mostly fake news. You know, in in Python groups, in in Linux group, in this group, things like that. So he wrote a book on the history of Common Lisp. And and uh, I cannot read it, but I chatted with him. So his story of Lisp is not what you hear. Is not, you know. So what I mean by that? So what's the difference? Well, if you are a common Lisper, you probably know a lot of stories. And basically, what happens is that these people they want to promote news or history or facts that's that is advantageous that is positive about the thing that they love. For example, common Lispers, they will just, their, their head is filled with all the things that's positive about common Lisp, about how common Lisp is going to, is the best language ever. Same thing with Haskell people, you know, with their monad and their whatever, skin people with their uh, tail recursion and core CC. Stuff like that. Python people, you know, all the same. Perl, Emacs, and Vim. So, but anyway, so you you read his um. So so anyway, check you you might want to check out his uh, this guy. You have to look somewhere. You have to um. He was on Google Plus, but unfortunately, unfortunately, these fucking corporate scums they spread fake news. You know, uh, Google Plus and Google censorship and Facebook and Twitter, they Google Plus killed Google Plus. Google killed Google Plus about a year ago. So all the all the posts and writings are gone. But anyway, he, he has published a book. So that's a digression about this essay. Okay. Let me copy it to my website. Actually I want to start to do uh I want to start to code Emac Lisp. So let's uh go to so let's uh post that so I in this essay I was talking about this magazine. So you look at them, you you know, with a curious mind, you study and uh, all the details. Then you find, then you start to read about a space odyssey, the movie. Not the way you think. Okay, most people they watch the movie. Oh, there's a movie there, and that's it. But you dive deeper. Why? Why is it made? What? What's the background story? It's it's a lot. Okay. So for example, it says. Anyway, I'm not going to talk about this uh, page. But anyway, it then it soon involves. Thus spoke Zarathustra, and Richard Strauss. You know, the Richard Strauss is a famous musician and. And Nietzsche, a philosopher, uh, who is known for nihilism. Okay, so it's related to this work, this this and, and music, classical music. And uh, then you start to read about thus spoke Zarathustra, the philosophy and stuff. Okay, so that's about that. So anyway, so back to my art blog. So most of them is pretty pictures, and this this creature, you know, it's not not it's not just pretty pictures. Okay, this creature, Axoto, this creature is known for its regener regenerative abilities. There are quite a few 
creatures that have a, that ability. The most well known is of course lizards. You know, lizards or gecko. You cut off their arms and they will regrow. But this creature is more so. And actually, there are also other micro microorganisms that has such um, ability. And and scientists are, you know, bio, biologists are studying it, of course, to benefit humanity. So anyway, but but there's more than that. This creature is from known for its regenerative abilities but by the way this creature lives in like Mex Mexico <laughs> Mexico there's a lake something like that but this creature is also used in the science fiction Dune okay so have you guys read Dune? Dune deep fake okay deep fake so anyway so this deep fake that's a a topic suggestion by Dave Morris. <laughs> Actually, I don't know nothing about that. I I have not even seen it. Deep fake. Wait, deep fake is that? Um, okay, I was thinking deep nude. <laughs> deep fake. So what what's deep fake? Oh, deep fake is a AI software that generates fake news in a believable way right that's a deep fake so so this creature is also used in the in the fiction uh dune and uh, it's used in a very dark way okay it's called axol tank axotol tank you have to look it up i'm not I, i'm not going to go into because because then it it gets into the the topics the topic that's sensitive to the social justice scan. But anyway, so there is this thing called Axoto Tank of Dune. Dune is a epic epic uh, science fiction. You know, recounting the stories of thousands of years, generations with nations and planets and the universe and different maps and what ha what happens to them dune i haven't read the book by the way so this so back to my art blog art blog so you have pretty pictures then you have uh not just pretty pictures you know yeah i love tits here we have a girl naked girl tits sculpture <laughs> so you have girls naked girls and and by the way naked girls you know like i said before they are the center of humanity we evolve around them throughout the edges age throughout the it you know the edges uh in asian you know in in in, in why is that because they they give birth girls not older women girls young girls that's that's why we are centered around them men centers around them and girls center around them too because all you have to check for that is you look at women's magazines it's all pretty young girls women's magazines it's, <laughs> it's all pretty young girls uh, and it's on Hollywood every day you know the superstars they show in their tits their ass with their naked dress you know the ever forever ever more creative naked dresses showing the you know the 1000 ways to show their tits and ass young girls so here is daughter of Niobe and so you know besides besides being pretty you there is art there is humanity you know this is a ancient story of Greek mythology daughter of Niobe so let me tell you what what's the story so what why is that she what what's the story of her she okay that that's going to be a big story then you know since if i'm gonna start to talk about greek mythology because greek mythology is one million pages one million pages okay let, let me tell you the story yes in a summary so you have this this girl this girl is the princess the goddess the queen of of uh, pretty girls the let me tell you what it is she is the greatest bitch of all times this this girl 
Her name is Artemis. She, you know, she she's like a princess. You know, the she can do whatever she wants, and、uh, she and her brother Apollo killed twelve childrens of Nao Nao Naobi. So she she so th- that's her. Okay, she and her brother Apollo killed twelve children of Naobi. Why? Because Naobi boasted that she has twelve children, far more than than、um, than Artemis' mom. You know, Artemis' mom, Artemis, her mom is、um, Z. Yeah, her her parents is Zeus and Leto. Okay, so they have. Zeus has thousands of childrens with <laughs> with with ten ten thousand women. Okay, so but anyway, Zeus and Leto have two children. I think one is Artemis, her who is a goddess of. Uh, her 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 story varies. Some sometimes it's said goddess of mus, you know, vaginal birth or. Oh, I got a spelling error, so I got correct that vaginal bitch,、uh, merciless vaginal bitch. That's right. Artemis for her vaginal beauty and cruelty. Artemis is a merciless vaginal bitch. She kills with her brother with her arrow for petty much for pretty much gaming. That's what she does. She so she killed the twelve all of them twelve children. Of Naomi, because Naomi boasted that she has more children than her parents, so she killed them. She and her brother with her arrow, like a game, you know, game. And、uh, so that is the story of Naomi. So Naomi became a stone that's wet forever, crying forever. So you know, it's interesting. Sometimes you have this stone. When I was ch- child, I I've I've seen it. Like you have a stone, you. You know, you use a water spray, a、uh, you know water gun. You you put water on it, and the water disappears right away. <laughs> Does anyone know what 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 is that? I always wondered about that. I don't think I ever find out what what exactly what's the name of such stone, and what is the property that makes it do that. Does anyone know? Like there's a I I I I think this often happens with a brick. As well, some 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 brick, like you put water on it, the water dries right away. Like in, within one second, it disappears right away. Does doesn't matter how much you water you put on it. I don't know how does that happens. Does anyone know the name of such stone? So anyway, Niobe became known as the you know she became by the Greek mythology she is、uh, perpetually weeping. So that's that's about that Niobe, daughter of Niobe. That's that's a sculpture by what? By who? Who is this guy? By a、uh, Hoti Salustiani in Rome. Okay, five fifth century BC. So this is two hundred five two thousand five hundred years ago. This sculpture. Have you ever touched something? That's few thousand years ago. Okay, so that's about that, and that's about Artemis. Okay, Greek mythology. You know,、uh, there's tons of stories. Greek mythology, Artemis. So anyway, back to my art blog.、Uh, so many interesting things and、uh, many mathematical beauty. For example, we have this. Hexagonal star roof. This is a architecture, architectural beauty. This one is in China. You know, China in the past ten or twenty years has grow and grow, and you have so many things in China. And、uh, the Westerners don't know. You know, the <laughs> the white people they they don't want to believe it, and they are in darkness. They don't know, but they they what what they want to believe is that China bad. You know, they you know you you need to bomb them. That's what they want to believe. They want. Meanwhile, they 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 have a instinctive. You know, it's built in the brain. 
all, uh, all of us, you have an instinctive filter to filter out anything that you don't want to believe. Because if you believe it, it may do harm to you. You know, that this is a very interesting phenomenon in, in psychology. Because, you know, you might think logically, we want to know everything that's true. Because once we know the truth, we can deal with it better. You know, we, we'll, we'll fare better. We'll have better outcomes for things, you know, whatever, who, whoever you are. Once you know the truth, then you can make a better decision so that the outcome will benefit you more. But however, that's not the case. You know, we, our brain has built in filter so we actually we, we filter certain fact or truth we don't want to believe that's why you have codes like emacs code python code common lisp code haskell code you know s some of these examples codes they believe <laughs> they believe you know things and not not to mention political codes and religion of course it's even bigger political things and religion and nationalism and you know so anyway, so so human animal psychology, we it's built in, you know, by evolution. We 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 so apparently, apparently this is this this seems like a paradox. Apparently, human animals apparently, if we filter out certain truth and fact that actually have beneficial outcomes for us. Uh, I think this is a bit hard to explain why that is so, you know, because, well, I know partly because, you know, your behavior depends on your, because <laughs> our codes too, yeah, I'm a, I'm a code, <laughs> I need to be a bigger code, you know, small code, like, you know, 50 people watching per video, <laughs> that's no code, <laughs> I need to be bigger. And uh, I need to generate money, you know, I need to, that's the thing, that's the thing about codes, the code leaders, usually, often, often, not, not always, but often. So anyway, so it's a very interesting phenomenon that about psychology, where you, where certain fact, if you filter it out, it actually benefit you. And in part, I think it's because your behavior depends on what you know and what you think your behavior you know your decision who you make friends with what what's your goal your plan the way you think depends on what you know you know your experience and if you filter out certain fact certain you know certain fact it actually benefits you uh, it's it's I think it's hard to resolve that in some you know to explain that completely but but that's you know that is what what is going on you know in this 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 bias in other words it's called bias this bias is built in in the brain you know so it's it's not logical you, you see that that's the thing you know you know we are getting into the forefront of psychology and neuroscience. Because if you really think about it, the neuroscience or the brain, or how we make judgments, how we judge things, how, how does that work exactly? We don't know. You know, to this day, we don't know how that works exactly. Yeah, we have neuroscience. Yeah, we have neurons. We understand, you know, but we don't really understand exactly how it works. And also, we don't understand what is consciousness. I mean, what's self, self, you know, it's, we cannot find a mathematically precise definition for what is what is uh, intelligence. Nor can we define what means you know intelligence as in you know artificial intelligence. We we cannot find a precise definition. Nor can we define what is a conscious. You know what is conscious. What is um, self aware awareness for example we kill pigs we kill cows and bulls we kill we kill them because we think they are brutes you know we kill them for food you know or ants and insects flies uh, mosquitoes we kill them without much thought 
but and we kill you know cows of course we kill them and you, you know you go to McDonald's you eat you know hamburger let's have a hamburger <laughs> well that's that's the meat of some dead cows or you know and 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 sheep and uh, goats lamp lamp chop I, I would like to have a lamp chop please so we you kill you kill them no problem but American to the white people these idiots these rights human rights animal rights these and uh, these idiots but they they have a reservation when it comes to say dogs or cats you know because oh no now you cannot kill it because dogs is somehow you know we we are we say dogs are the friends of humans okay but what 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 about cows you know I, I mean I mean what about uh, Crows, you know, crows are super intelligent, and we we kill whales. Whales, you eat them too. You know, we eat a lot of things. Yeah, I mean, even, I mean, the Chinese they eat even more. They eat everything, but we t let's limit uh, us to you know Americans. You still kill a lot of things. So, so I mean, the point is, so what 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 makes a distinction? What animal you can say you kill? That's no problem. And while other animals, you say that's oh you cannot do that. Yeah, that's unethical. You know, this human rights and animal rights. This this rights idiotic concept. So the question is, what 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 can you kill? What you can you kill? What 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 is the definition? Normally, we say those we cannot kill or we 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 do things to them. We think it's cruelty. Is because we think, okay, we intelligence. That's the dividing line, normally, tradi by tradition, okay? If you have an animal that's intelligent, then if you do something bad to them, you, th you know, we think it's not ethical. We have a problem with it, you know, especially the white people. Uh, for example, dolphins, dolphins, whales, horse. But that's not a, uh, that's not a, um, consistent argument because dogs and cats they are not really smart okay octopuses octopus and uh, octopus and uh, crows they are far more intelligent than dogs and cats or horse for that matter but we eat octopuses you know we eat them uh, but then we don't, you know, but horse, dogs, cats, we think, oh, this is, you cannot eat them. The fucking, you know, white people, you know. So it's not consistent. So what, you know, so you get into this problem. Anyway, we digress into that because I was talking about intelligence. You know, by tradition, usually you use the, you use intelligence as the dividing line of what animals you can kill and what animal you cannot do bad things to. So back to, so why did we mention about that intelligence? Because we, are, we were talking about, uh, yeah, we started to talk about, you know, how do you define intelligence and, uh, and artificial intelligence, consciousness, yeah, consciousness and uh, the human mind, the, you know, so what I'm saying is that we don't, to this day, we don't understand how it works. We don't really know. So these are kind of the ultimate question in philosophy, and we don't know what what is the answer. We have no idea. Uh, so how did we get into that topic? So I was saying because Uh, how did we get into the intelligence topic? Because, oh, biases. Yeah, the the interesting thing about why biases form, which biases actually. So, as far as I know, biases is building. It's a natural. It's part of our brain. It's fundamental. You cannot remove it. So, if you study this deep, you know this even. This fun, th this thing about bias even comes up in artificial intelligence. For example, today we have uh, self-driving cars, and usually you have a d dilemma: should you, you know, if there's some choice, you know, a car went uh, a, a bad situation, should you kill 
let's say this one person who is a professor <laughs> or this 10 homeless person which one should you kill <laughs> like like there's a meme where you have to decide on, on a real track you either kill one person or 10 person you know you have to decide so th that meme came from came from I suppose some artificial intelligence research so the question is you want the you you want the self-driving cars or certain artificial intelligence to make a decision but the the thing is that how do you make a decision you know especially when it comes to ethics so basically the current state of things is that we can't we don't know how to we do, we don't know exactly how to what, what is you know what is more ethical what is not we cannot make that decision so this is connected to bias that's what i'm talking about so i'm so this is connected to several things uh consciousness bias artificial intelligence philosophy ethics you know philosophy of ethics and uh, you know psychology so what i'm saying is that this filtering mechanism filtering filtering out things you you don't you don't like is part of us you know it's it's it, we we have it from evolution and uh, it seems strange that you filter out things you don't believe that actually um, benefit you and uh, that's the that is hard to explain that's that is what I'm saying and and so what I'm trying to say is that we so far we don't understand how all these things work because in order to in order to understand how it works you have to drag in basically you have to understand what is what what is, you have to know what is intelligence what is consciousness what is self awareness awareness and you know all these you know so we don't know the answer so far so back to the um back to my art blog so we have a lot of things and this is David Lee Roth he is a rock star uh, you know he's uh, one of the top rock star in 1980s you know he's old he's <laughs> he's a nerdy character he's on YouTube doing his show he's doing a show on YouTube you know <laughs> but he's now you know 30 years old older so he's like 60 probably he's old and he's a nerdy guy uh, but but this is one of his most popular video, California Girls, a song in 1985. So I'm I'm going to go through my. Okay, so many interesting things. This is this one. Is a commercial, made by Motorola, and the, they are making fun of Apple's 1984 commercial. So let me show you. This is a. Uh, This is this is one of the most commercial ever, you know, in human history. Apple's 1984 commercial. And this commercial, if you haven't seen it, you know, go see it. Go to my uh Xar Arts page, you know, go to my page and you can see it. So so let's go to Okay, so let's sync my website and then go back copy the file path paste it here make a link copy it close and I go here I paste it so you can go to that website then you will find my link to my art blog then you scroll down then you can get to this commercial you can watch it Okay, so this commercial is very popular, and and it's popular in part because it alludes to George Orwell's 1984, his novel, his uh, dystopia novel, which is a, a big topic by itself. Uh, so this is this happened in 1984, but but in 2000, in in what year? In 2011, Motorola. Motorola made a commercial that makes fun of Apple you know all these white hooded people they are Apple people you know with their white ear ear earbuds like this girl 
So Motorola made a commercial that's <laughs> that's that's taunting Apple. Uh, and so that's interesting. Okay, so that's about that. So that's my art blog. So I'm going to go down. There's quite many interesting things, and some of the some some of them are internet history. For example, this one, this guy is a very funny, um, very popular around year early year two thousands, two thousand two. You know things like that. Very popular. Uh, this before YouTube became popular. Okay, that there's that guy. Uh, so many interesting interesting things on my art blog and this one this guy who drew this one Kim Jong Ji he is one of the greatest illustrator on earth okay probably one of the top five or top three greatest living illustrator uh, you know maybe top ten in history of humanity so he's one of the greatest illustrator I've seen there are many YouTube uh, videos of him. He draw things live. You know, he he can draw this just well. M many illustrators can. You know, he he just start to draw it very fast. No, but and also no mistakes. I mean, w if there's a mistake, he just keep going. So he draw this in real time, in ten minutes, something like that. In ten, ten minutes, he'll have this in real time without without having a model or having you know some photo to copy on he just like just draw it start from scratch without looking at anything so this guy uh kim jun ji but however i don't i don't like his uh artwork you know when you look at artworks oh god we oh god <laughs> we're getting into not safe for work stuff so when you look at this when you look at a artwork, artwork they they sh they within it within the work it embeds the style of the artist and it embeds the personality of the artist. So this Kim Jong Kim Kim Jong Ji guy, he's a great artist, but I look at his artwork, I. Uh, I don't like his artwork that much because there is a certain uh, personality, certain perspective of the world you can see in his artwork. I don't like that style. I mean, he's kind of like he look at the world. You know, you can look you you look at his his artworks. You know, hundreds of them, and you can see the character of this person. In the same way, you can see that in a novelist. You know, if you read certain novelists, you can see the character of the guy, the author. Stephen King, or you know, many science fiction writers, or 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 other novelists. But anyway, so I I look at this Kim Jong Il's artwork. I see this guy. He's he's got a world view, a perspective of the, of the world that is some some somewhat a somewhat like sloppy and uh, happy go lucky you know like careless you know he doesn't he doesn't care um you know that kind of attitude so i i didn't really like his work and Belle Le Jour is another is a great is a classic french uh, movie okay so lots of lots of interesting things and here <laughs> Here is another interesting thing. You have the Hugo. The, you, this is a character in the video game Street Fighter. Okay, but however, you see what's interesting thing about this drawing is that they have, you know, artworks are often exaggerated for the dramatic effect. Okay, so this is you know one of the character. So this Hugo, so you can, but here you see this girl is super small. You see this girl, <laughs> this pretty girl is so small, sits on his shoulder and this giant guy, you know, do the fighting. It's interesting. And scientifically, this is called sexual dimorphism, where the male and female 
of the same species become very different. You know, they differ greatly in some cases. They differ greatly in their size, in their physical size. And this is also true for human animals. Males are bigger than females. But in other species, it, it's very big difference. Like male is this big, female is this big, something like, you know, something like that. So this is called sexual dimorphism. You study that when you study biology. You know, you study, you go deep. You know, in college, you take intro biology, then you take, you know, you, you, you learn things, okay? You learn cellular biology, microbiology, um, you know, you go learn things. And here is another architectural beauty. This is, again, in China. This, you see this, like they have hundreds of these, like literally hundreds, hundreds of these amazing architectures in China. Well, elsewhere, elsewhere too, but, but in China, a lot, a lot more, uh, you know, incredible. So you have this tree, tree-like building in China. Fascinating. You know, I, I was so amazed by these Chinese things, you know, like, you know, how do you find these things? Well, you can, you can follow some Chinese on Twitter, you know, the Chinese, some channels. So you, you see ton of it every day, like the big, you know, train, like they have the, you know, bully train, like 20, 20 rails in parallel. Jesus, like <laughs> 20 rails. So, so then you see the train, then you see these buildings, hundreds of them every day, you know, there's new, then skyscrapers, then bridges, you know, the longest bridge, you know, beautiful, fantastic. You started to see this, like, oh, I see, I started to see it, you know, like every day, you know, and I was just amazed. Then, you know, this is genuine amazement. You know, I'm, a, I'm America. American. I've never been to China. So I live in America, you know, and, uh, you know, America, we have, you know, we have San Francisco, we have New York, we have, uh, you know, Ch Chicago or Los Angeles, you know, skyscrapers, we have, we have skyscrapers, we are the first one to have lots of them, you know, <laughs> record breaking. But then, but you started to see this, this China things, they drop they draw off your American fox, okay? Like American today, you have nothing, nothing new. Everything is like 100 years old. You, you, you don't have anything new. You don't have new skyscrapers. You have nothing. Meanwhile, you see in China and other places, you know, in, in, in Dubai, you, you see lots of this going on. The biggest bridge, the biggest dam, the biggest satellite, the biggest, biggest radio, um, dish embedded in a mountain, you know, things like that. So you don't see that. But meanwhile, you talk to typical Americans, like I know, you know, on my Discord, they, they, they like don't know a shit, okay. Meanwhile, they, 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 they have this very strong American bias. They, they, you know, they, they don't, and meanwhile, they don't know a shit. They are thinking, oh, China is just corrupt. They, oh, they just evil, or they just whatever, you know, Meanwhile, on the on the news in USA papers, every day you see is like uh, stupid things, you know, propaganda, China evil, basically just China evil, China evil this, China evil that. But the real life things like these buildings, you don't you don't see, you don't you know this, you don't see. So I'm I'm literally gen genuinely amazed by these things going on in China. Then you have this, okay, this poster, Lolita, okay, this, uh, this is a classic film, which again, the white people, the white men, okay, it's a taboo, you know, they don't know how to deal with this issue. <laughs> they, when, when it comes to this thing, they, they, there is a word, okay, I don't want to mention, because uh, in, in the white guy's mouth, every day is that word. Yeah, they they have a few words that they that 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 they chant every day. It's in their brain. It's they cannot escape it. Like they are, they 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 are forced into thinking about 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 five or ten terms every day on on Twitter. <laughs> so anyway, this poster is about the film classic, 
by Stanley Kubrick. Okay, so I'm not going to talk about that too much. Uh, and and Brazil is another great, fantastic um, science fiction. Okay, it's it's also about dystopia. Brazil. Uh, and this girl, this this woman is fantastic. Is she is fantastic? Brazil. Okay, it's a fantastic movie, science fiction. You should go watch it. So anyway, so I was so I'm going through my okay. Then then you have some of the greatest um, solar tower, you know, a thermal energy, you know, renewable energy. This one is in China, again in China. Uh, but you also have some USA ones, okay? So let me show you some of some of these. This one is in France. This one is in 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 USA, I think. Uh, yeah, I think this one is Nevada. Wait, is it in USA? I forgot where is this. Uh, and this one is in Spain, I think. Yeah, Spain. You know about solar panels. So I'm very much into. So this is a different style of solar um, energy. They concentrate light ray into the pipe in the middle. Uh, you know, a different. So it's very interesting to study the efficiency of these different styles of solar energy. So you have massive arrays of it. I love I love these kind of things. I love it. So you so you can see. So you know. So I'm very much interested in these things. Here's another style, a parabolic mirror. They concentrate the sunlight into this thing in the middle. So they heat it up. And uh, the, here's another one. So I'm I'm very attracted to these things, but how you know and and also the wind turbines. Let me show you some of the wind turbines. They are beautiful, you know. Some some people they think these are eyesores, but I rather I think I think they are actually beautiful to my eyes. I love seeing them. These are gigantuan, okay. You see this you see this that that thing there that's a human is like this tiny over there. You know so th this is a, like 20 stories high. 10 stories high. No so usually a wind turbine is like uh, 120 meters. Okay so these are gigantuan, you know, you have array of them. And this one this one is in Sweden and actually one of the person his dad works with these things, so his dad goes into one of them and take a photo, and and this guy, you know, he's in he's Swedish. He sent me the photo about uh, in two thousand six. So you know, he's a Emacs user. So that's how we he you know we know each other. He sent me this photo because he saw me collecting these photos. What's his name? Anders. Bargard, yeah, Anders Bargard. Okay, so uh, I wonder how he is doing. So this is, you know, this is 14 years ago. So he sent me this photo in Sweden, and some other photos I took, or I, uh, I took, or my friends, you know, my real life friends sent it to me. And this, this one I took. So anyway, wind turbines, okay, fascinating, but. You know, then I learned. I learned in the past few years that wind turbines and the solar energy, they are crap. Okay, we have been brainwashed, especially California. In California, here, you know, the California, the very progressive state in USA, we we have been brainwashed to believe that these are great things because I I believe them. I really I love them. I love the, how they looks. I love how they works. I love the technology. You know, and I love how they w works. You know, the, the the you know, so I believed in them for like twenty years, but until 
the rise of social justice in starting in 2016 I started to read you know all the you know why why are they thinking about these things or that things so I started to read a lot of things then then I learned eventually you know two years ago or so I learned the truth that these things this renewable energy this solar and and wind turbine they, they are like do nothing okay compared to nuclear energy what you want is nuclear energy that's 10 times more efficient something like that than this this then these solar panels or wind panels these are like petty they are just decorations they are and and partly they are propaganda and money they make money for certain people you know that that's so we have been brainwashed to believe in them um so anyway so so that's my some of my interesting photos and stuff you know usually my collections are things contrary to your opinions contrary to your beliefs that's the things I like to talk about why because what's the point if I talk about things everyone already knows already believes so I talk about some other things especially because I'm American I live in USA so I hear the news from typically white people and today the social justice gun they are far worse they are much more worse but they don't see things they don't they don't know things okay for example this this sign okay this sign is one of the things that's lodged in white people's mind every day every day they talk they talk about that they cannot escape like their brain is like deformed it's crippled by certain you know by by certain thoughts so this so these white people they don't know <laughs> they don't see this they don't know these things and these things this buddha it it is not some obscure thing that you have to dig you know in history in archaeology it's, that's not the case in asia asia japan china okay taiwan hong kong and south asia you have more population than europe and america okay more people than asia then also including india okay china india japan okay you have more people than you than europe and america and australia combined okay these white people countries more people in asia and every person in asia know about this but in america for example the white people when you show them this oh they are like oh my god what is this jesus this should be banned you know they, they they never seen this before they don't know that's a situation that is a situation i'm talking about that is a situation why i'm i have contrary opinions i'm showing this because i because what you believe is not truth you 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 are like one plus one equals two three every day you, 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 you know that's that's what's happening so so that is why i collect this uh photos and also the photo by itself you know it's deep okay people human animals we human animals created this thing you know this sculpture it it's not it's not something you can just create try to do it you know try to go ahead and do make one <laughs> make this thing today you will see you cannot do it you see this this i i'm not sure how big is this you know this is a sculpture it takes a team you know hundred thousands or a city to build it so it's a human artifact you know human sometimes somewhere in some region they created this and of course this is part of religion this is buddhism it's another uh, big topic just like for example in brazil uh i think saint paul or some some large city you have a giant huge jesus you know like uh in, in this um, posture and of course then in usa you have the freedom goddess you know in new york uh, which is a gift from france so you have to uh, look and understand things not from your narrowed you know your uh, common you know the, the idiotic sources you have to broaden your mind 
And here, here is a piece of history, okay? Here is a piece of internet history. Now look at this. This is back in 2000. Um, what year is this? I have the year. I think it's 2005 or something around there. This is at Google. You see that? Now, today, you cannot do that anymore. So this this photo is a it's a piece of internet history and somewhat significant. You can see a cultural shift here. And this guy again that's he this guy is a piece of history. He's the his this guy, his name is Vic Gondora. I think. Okay, so wait. I'm not sure it's actually him, but Vic Gondora is a guy, uh, Indian blood. He was the lead, you know, some top manager, top leader of Google. He was the lead of Google Plus. He tried to push Google Plus to become the social network, you know, uh, because of the threat of Facebook. And eventually he failed and get, gave up. Then he quit. He quit Google. You know, so here is a piece of Google history and also a piece of internet history and history of of American culture. So you can see back then, this is kind of fun, okay? And we have lots of, it, this is Google, I think it's Google Halloween or something. Where Google people have fun, you know, engineers. Back then it was, Google was good. This is 2000s. But today, Google is mostly just social justice, lawsuit, you know, Google, you know, lawsuit this, feminism, lawsuit, trans, lawsuit, Google suing, you know, Google firing people, you know, then the Google firing people criticize this or that, and Google firing activists, you know, some of the social justice, you know, it's a lawsuit, it's a lawsuit, lawsuit games, lawsuit circus. And this one is the beginning of Google Plus. She is a, a she is kind of an actress. You can you can watch a video on Chrome. This video does not show up in in uh, Firefox because Firefox does not support MKV. You know, again, here is another very interesting history of. Uh, okay, here now this is about history of technology. As you know, we, you know we tech geekers know. Hey, good morning. Hello, beautiful people. I'm gonna read the comments in, in a bit. Okay, I already talked ab about 57 minutes. Okay, I, I think I do 10 more minutes and let's start. So internet history. Here is a piece of internet history. Two aspects. One is the history of Google Plus. This is a video showing this girl sing singing a, a meme, kind of a song about Google Plus. This is when Google Plus began. Okay, hold on a second. There's a Jesus. Be right back. Okay, I'm going to stop. That's about it for today's talk show. And uh, and let's see, am I still alive? So that's about it for today's talk show. I was going to do some Emacs, but we talked and talked, then stop. So I, I was saying, I'm going to read the comments for five minutes. Okay, so... Um, I didn't catch up. Hello, beautiful people. Um, anyway, so I'm talking about this uh, beginning of Google. 
history of Google. Uh, but the other aspect is about technology, the history of or the politics of uh, movie codec, movie formats, you know, video formats in the past 20 years. You see, here's a very interesting thing. And, and this, this relates to open source, the politics of open source. You know, as you know, I'm against the typical open source and free software f phonetics. You know, here is an example why. You see, this video codec, th this video is not showing in Google, in, in Firefox, okay? Let me show, let me show this video in uh, Google Chrome. So right now I'm in Google Chrome and this video shows up, you can play it. So that's, uh, you know, this video was some sort of meme on Google Plus when Google Plus began in 2011. Okay, so this is like nine years ago. So it's a piece of history and I'm recording it. And uh, so the thing I want to talk about is the video format. So the video format MKV is espoused by all the open source people. They love it because they say, oh, it's open source and uh, also it's technically superior, things like that. But mainly because it's open source. But an open source people, they usually often also chant about Firefox. You see, right now I'm in Firefox, you can see. But however, in Firefox, you cannot play this MKV video but you can do it in Google Chrome. So there's a, you see, this, this open source, is, it seems there's a problem. Why is that? The question is, why is that this Firefox browser loved by all these open source fanatics does not support this video uh, technology that's also open source and, and, and uh, loved by these open source fanatics? Why is that? Have you guys thought about that? Have you guys, why, why is that? Uh, good morning, Bart. <clears throat> is it open source? I don't know. I, I don't know this MKV, but I know it's a format that open source fanatics love. Okay, so let me, so that's about it for today. Let me read the comments. We, we, we stop in, uh, in, in three minutes, five, five minutes, okay. Okay, since I started to talk about my art blog, I cannot stop because this one is another great, fantastic, interesting thing. This guy, Richard Williams, wrote this book, The Animator's Survival Kit. Okay, this is a classic, you know, it's loved by all, anyone who who do uh, animations or have professions in animation. You know, animation is a big, big business today. You know, movie, Japanese animation or Disney animation or not even or commercials. You know, you have to have animations and also illustrators and artists. You all involves animation. Animation is very different from, from draw, from, from anime or from drawing static cartoons. Okay. But anyway, what I'm saying is that this guy, so this book is well known and you know, it's a classic, the best book for anything related to animation. And that's one thing, okay, but more than that, animation, when you read this book or look into the details, animation involves, you know, anim animation is so such a fascinating thing. Like when you watch Disney Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse or other characters, you can see, you can see their expressions, what they want, you know, the, through their, even, even Mickey Mouse is not human, but you, you can, or Finding Nemo, you know, the modern movies, you can see their desires, you know, just like another human animal. And how do you get that? You see, you, 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 you read them through the lines, through, through the lines, through not just 
not just a static image of their face, but you also much of it came from their motion. That is body language. So this is not just you know this is a great book. That's one thing. But the topics he talk about involves psychology, human perception, body language. You know, in fact, body language. Count. You know, it's um, it's significant. In some cases, the majority of the content of human communication, and that brings me to. The nerds, the fucking nerds. Okay, Mo most programmers, you know, nerds. We, you know, we don't want to go on to video because oh, talk, you know, text is sufficient. You know, they they don't want to go on video for many reasons, but they are just idiotic. They don't know about all these things. Body language. Okay, body language. In many cases, like when you watch me, okay, I convey it far more, like hundred times more than is possible in writing. Uh, okay. So anyway, so let me read the comments, and that's it for today. So I haven't been reading comments, and read. Let's read the comments, and let's. So Alshine says that guy, the Lisp expert, is from Croatia. I think. Okay. So. We talked about this this expert before, and he is in Croatia. Okay, so where is it here? Yeah, wait. This guy. This guy, Casimir Jorin. Casimir Majorin. Okay, he's in Croatia. How do you know? So <laughs> sunshine, sun outshine, outshined. So you know. Okay, so we got quite a few. Um, so I'm gonna read the comments for for two more minutes, and let's stop. Pico Lisp. Okay. So lots of comments I missed. Hello, beautiful people. I got my key mouse track today. Oh my God, Kathy, you you bought that. Kathy, show us photos. You have to show us photos, and you bought that thing. Amazing, Kathy says, I bought it in pieces, assembled at home. It's forty dollars cheaper. Wow. He put my pieces back to multiple times. Okay, so Kathy says double key mouse track, not chair mounted, brown switch and QWERTY. I'm glad I didn't go straight to Vorac. It's a bit harder to get used used to than I expected. Uh, yeah, hello beautiful people says every single rock I touch was formed millions of years ago. Yeah, I was <laughs> I was about to mention. That exception, you no, know, except rocks and trees. You know, <laughs> of course that doesn't count. I'm talking about you have to. Have you ever touched something that is human-made, and that's a few thousand years ago? Then that's a question. Uh, very few people have. I mean, you 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 could go to museums, but usually you are not, are not allowed to touch. Uh, I th you know. Please don't say we eat everything. Then we Chinese don't have friend. <laughs> uh, my kimas for me it was much longer than the time they say you get used to it. Key mouse, okay. Uh, beautiful people. Keys, so. Jeez. So Kathy says, I actually, I actually find some Chinese sellers manufacturing this stuff with less than 150. Oh, hope there will be more people interested. Greetings, greetings, spot. 
tired pretty much I'm gonna go sleep by send you information okay Kathy H asked you to send pics of your stuff <laughs> pics of my stuff she has already seen already seen okay I think that's it for today guys thank you for watching and uh, have a good day I'm gonna shut down